Mr. Bridenstine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you both for being here. It's, uh, it's an honor to have you before our committee. Uh, certainly, I've spent plenty of time in the Pacific as a Navy pilot myself, uh, now serving in the Oklahoma Air National Guard. General Scaparati, I wanted to ask you, or actually share with you one of my, my big concerns I've heard from one of my constituents. I want to make you aware of a recent Army regulation uh, change regarding dining facility use for rotationally deployed forces under your command. Effective February 15th, 2016, the Army declared essential unit messing for rotationally deployed soldiers serving in the Pacific. In other words, all soldiers deployed temporary duty to Korea must use the dining facility, the DFAC. This policy will literally take money out of soldiers' pockets, hundreds of dollars per month, in two ways. First, the Army will, the Army will charge for meals at the DFAC through automatic payroll deductions. That's automatic payroll deductions. These deductions will occur whether or not a soldier actually uses the DFAC. And as you're aware, when you do missions in these areas, uh, those missions happen during breakfast, happen during lunch, and you're not able to use the DFAC. So soldiers will have money deducted even though they're not using the DFAC. Uh, second, the Army is also taking away their daily food allowance, known as the government meal rate. I have a constituent in the 10th Combat Aviation Brigade currently at Camp Humphreys. The Army's bureaucratic jiggery pokery will reduce his paycheck over $700 per month through the automatic DFAC deduction and stopping meal allowances. I want to repeat that, $700 per month. These soldiers are not going to Korea for a week or even a month, they're going for nine months. And so when you lose $700 a month, that ends up being a good chunk of money. In contrast, a soldier at Camp Humphreys under the permanent change of station orders uh, is apparently exempt from the automatic meal deduction. Uh, it, aviation units such as, such as the 10th Cab don't plan training or missions around the whims of the DFAC, as, as I've already talked about. Uh, that's why the food allowance exists in, in the first place. That's, that's why it was there. Um, and I would like to show you some pictures here of what's going on at the DFAC in Korea. There's, there's a couple of pictures. Can we just slide through a few more? So these soldiers that are they're having their, their, their money automatically withheld, and then they're being forced to wait in an hour line in order to go through the DFAC. Some of them can't go through the DFAC at all because of missions. When they do go, they're waiting an hour, and that's three times a day. That's three hours a day where they're, they're, they're being delayed. Um, and this is, um, again, this happens three times a day. I, I just want to get a commitment from you, General, uh, that you'll do something for our soldiers who are flying, you know, in many cases, high risk. And these are steady state missions. This isn't like a surprise. This isn't something that just came up. These are steady state missions at the DMZ. Um, and, and number one, I want to make sure they get their meals. I want to make sure that they're not waiting in line for three hours, three times a day. And I want to make sure they're not having their money taken away. Can you commit to me that you'll look into this? Absolutely. And okay. I'll come back to you personally on it. We've got not only the cab that you mentioned, but, you know, we have other rotational units, obviously, as a part of our readiness okay. that rotate regularly on nine-month rotations. They're probably affected as well. Okay. And, Mr. Chairman, before I yield back, I just want to note that, um, that I, I want to introduce legislation to make sure that this is taken care of. 